speak out with a voice of joy. Let it be heard to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. Alleluia. It was with huge sadness that we learnt of the death of our dear friend in Christ, Jason, Jason Victory, on Friday morning. I had been able to visit him shortly before he died and anoint him and share Holy Communion with the family around the bedside. Jason was an incredibly strong man in terms of his faith, his humanity and his love and we will miss him hugely. And we hold compassionately in our prayers Jackie, Jemima, Poppy and Flossie and all his family and friends. We learn too in the week of the sad passing of John Pavey, Jane Lewis's brother, and of Dennis Terry, Martin's father. And so we begin this Holy Mass with a moment of silence as we commend their souls to the care of Almighty God. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us and set us free from sin. Strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Risen Christ, by the lakeside, you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Holy Apostles. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, 
does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything. Since he gives himself to all mortals, life and breath and all things, from one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps reach for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous your deeds. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God. Tremendous his deeds among people. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river dry shod. Let our joy then be in him. He rules for ever by his might. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Come and hear, all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold his love from me. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Reading from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defence to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. 
And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and it is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep your commandments, Jesus said. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. so might I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. And so today we find ourselves celebrating the sixth Sunday of Eastertide. Well, the sixth Sunday of Eastertide is traditionally known as a Rogation Sunday, or the Great Rogation. The minor Rogations being the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, between the Great Rogation and Ascension Day, which is this coming Thursday. Rogation comes from a Latin word, rogare, which means to ask. Uh, for example, it shows up in the word interrogation. And it is a time set aside by the church for asking God to reveal his will for us through prayer. 
Now, there's a lot of nonsense uh, evolved with Rogation Tide over the years. In former generations, it became traditional to use this as an opportunity for asking God to bless the spring planting so that the land would yield an abundant harvest later in the year. When I was a vicar in Monmouth, I used to quite often say the daily mass in the convent, the Anglican convent just down the road. And on several occasions I had the great privilege of blessing the convent orchard and the kitchen gardens um, and the rest of the gardens, which were very important to the uh, self subsistent life of the nuns. It is good, of course, to remember that all things, all good things, are generous gifts of God, and we do well to be thankful for such blessings. But in the course of history, rogation time seems to be the thing, the point in the year when kind of, sort of a madness broke out and some very strange traditions grew up over the centuries connected with Rogation Tide. In the medieval times, sometimes they actually rolled the priest through the, the fields. Well, thank goodness that we're confined to our homes this year because that certainly isn't going to happen. So I think we'll forget that one. And then sometimes the whole parish walked around the boundaries and there was this appalling practice of beating the children with sticks to ensure that they would remember where the boundaries were. Uh, no, I don't think so. So you see in former times rogation was an opportunity to try to Christianise pagan practices and not always, it has to be said, very successfully. So let's get back to prayer. And that is the key thing, asking God in prayer on this Rogation Sunday, this Asking Sunday. In his final days on earth before the Ascension, Jesus told his disciples in no uh, uncertain terms to go back into the city and to spend their time waiting prayerfully for God's gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus said, will teach you everything and remind you all that I have said to you. And there is a similarity I guess between waiting for a good harvest and also waiting alongside with the land to bear fruit and waiting for the fruits of the Holy Spirit <coughs> in prayer. And indeed, are we not waiting every day upon the Holy Spirit to fill us, to mould us, to use us for God's purpose, to show us how to use the gifts with which we have been blessed for the good of the gospel. But how often are we just as dry as the seed scattered on that ground, just lying there, doing nothing, waiting for rain, waiting to burst into fruitfulness? Now, when I was a young lad, about eight or nine years old, we used to walk round to visit Grandma uh, at least once a week, sometimes more. And my granny used to have a huge fern, uh, not on, quite unlike this peace lily in, in, the, in the corner here, but it was a huge thing, huge plant. And it used to hang in uh, a kind of brass container hanging in the back window of the of the sitting room. And sometimes when we went round to, to visit, uh, especially at this time of year when there was that sort of gentle warm summer rain, 
the fern would be standing outside in the backyard in a bucket in the rain. And we used to say to Granny, you know, why is the fern out inside in the rain? And she would say, so it can soak up God's good rain and make it strong and grow. And that was her reply. Now, if you want a definition of what prayer is, that is about as good an explanation as I have known. And Granny used to set an example too by saying her prayers. Prayer is about waiting in God's presence not about talking, it's about waiting. And in the waiting and in the silence, we ask God to rain love down upon us, that we too may grow in hope and faith. Waiting in God's presence takes many forms. We can say quiet meditative prayers in private, morning or evening prayer. We can, when permitted, go to church and participate in the worship as a community and receive the sacraments in God's holy place. In these challenging times we can tune in to the YouTube broadcasts and make our spiritual communion with God and with one another. We can use the prayer materials and there's another one coming out in the post in the week. Uh, <coughs> it's a, a prayer book which will take you from the nine days from Ascension to Pentecost so that we can wait and pray for God's gifts as a parish community. But there is another way to pray quietly and to abide patiently and prayerfully in the presence of God and be receptive to his love and it is to do penance now that's not a very fashionable or popular or well understood word or concept today it has to be said but you see rogation tide was not just a time of prayer and waiting upon the Lord it was it was actually uh, a short penitential season. If you notice, the church always has a penitential season before a big feast of the Lord, so it makes sense to have some penitential opportunity before we celebrate the risen and ascended Lord. So, in the days, of course, when they were rolling priests through the fields and beating children on the church boundaries, they were also wearing the hair shirts, those undergarments made of rough, itchy hair. Now, thankfully we don't roll priests or beat children anymore, uh, and actually, I doubt we actually wear hair shirts anymore. No. Today, our hair shirt, well, is often to be found sitting next to us, perhaps, or at least socially distancing two metres apart. So yes, to live in harmony with one another, with no cross words, with understanding, with pure and total generosity, putting our needs last and needs of others first, even though we're challenged, then that is an act of penance. Because to live in harmony with no cross words and to address the challenges of being with one another, then that is penance because it demands that we serve others in a sacrificial way. We learn to accept differences, other ways of doing and seeing, even other ways of praying. Penance is enduring challenge. In a way, it could be said that we are living out a penance in this virus situation where we are challenged. We can't do what we'd like to do. We have to endure. We have to endure the testing in order 
to wait upon the glory of God. And it isn't easy. And it's not meant to be. You know, there are many times in our journey through life when things get really tough. But remember, for Christians, hopelessness is not an option. When things get difficult, when things get challenging, we have to ask with patience and with faithfulness, where is God in all this? Where are you, God? And we have to wait and prayerfully find out. My grandmother again. When we were children and things didn't quite go our way, or we weren't feeling too good, she'd say, offer it up as a prayer. Offer up to God our trials. Offer up to God the trivial and the onerous and the challenging. Make it a prayer. And what better way is there of putting ourselves into God's loving presence than to offer up our endurances of difficulties and sufferings and challenges of daily life and remembering that Jesus unites himself God, who is love, unites himself through Jesus with us on the cross. And we know that after the resurrection comes the glorious joy. After the crucifixion, rather, comes the glorious joy of the resurrection. And so what seemed to be a dying situation, of darkness becomes alive again with joy and resurrection possibility and so when we unite ourselves with the suffering of Christ we bring down upon us that life-giving and healing power of the Holy Spirit into our lives and into the lives of those around us those for whom we pray the light of God will shine in our lives and what is paralysed and preventing us from reaching the healing gift of God will suddenly come to life and be alive within us. So what should we ask for on this Rogation Sunday, this Asking Sunday? Let us ask God for the grace to live prayerfully, penitentially and sacrificially. And God will say to you, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. And to God be the glory. And so together we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let us open our hearts in prayer. 
thanking God for all the goodness and the blessings in our lives and presenting to the challenges and those for whom we care and pray and place them along with ourselves into God's loving presence. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the great gift of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for the glory of his resurrection life. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may share that risen life, and that through our love and our sacrifice and our prayerful hope, we may bring that love to one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this community of Holy Trinity here in Hallfield, Bristol. We pray for our parishioners, for their families, friends and neighbours at this time, for the community in which we live. We pray <coughs> For our bishops Viv and Lee, and for our, our archbishops John and Justin. And we remember as ever those of our brothers and sisters who worship and minister in your name this day but are threatened with the fear of persecution. We pray that the Holy Spirit may keep them strong and hopeful. Lord hear us Lord graciously hear us. And we pray for all those who are suffering the effects of this terrible virus, for those who are suffering in other ways too. We pray for all who care and tend the needy and the sick. We pray for our doctors and nurses and the NHS workers. We pray for care workers and people who are running nursing homes. We pray for those who tend to the hungry and the homeless. And we pray for our key workers. We pray for all who have to make decisions at this time. That they may be based on compassion and care for one another. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for those who are unwell in our parish, remembering Anthony Hick, Vanda Sherber, Maureen and Robin Wotton, Andy and family, Peter, Michael and John Crocker, Neville Brind, Errol Lloyd Parry, Matthew Stock, David Ratcliffe, Joe, Ophelia, Joan Borrow, Chris, Marcia, Geraldine and Margaret Taplin. And we hold before God any who have asked it for our prayers today and whom we hold in our hearts in love and care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the souls of the faithful and recently departed, remembering Jason Victory, Dennis Terry, John Pavey and Jeff Boot. In our year's mind we pray for Edward Holloway, Anna Hicks, Peter Hine, Linda Burden, Frank Baker, Eddie Brooks, Joan Seawood, Hilda Williams, Geraldine Bell and Morris Stanion. We pray too for all those whom we continue to love but see no longer. And we pray for those who mourn. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. As we pray for Jackie, Jemima, Poppy and Flossie, for Jane and Martin, and for Anne they may be held close to you in their sadness. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In this month of May, we can do no better than follow the example of Mary, who waited prayerfully to fulfil God's word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Jesus came and stood among his disciples. Peace be with you. They were overjoyed when they saw the risen Lord. Alleluia.
Lord, accept our prayers and offerings. Make us worthy of your sacraments of love by granting us your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with us. Lift up our hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms to us upon the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit upon your people. And gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. So that we in the company of Mary the mother of Jesus, Andrew, Edmund and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence 
as our Saviour has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Alleluia. And so together, united in the love and presence of God, we make our spiritual communion together. O Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things, and we long to enfold you within our souls. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least into our hearts. We embrace you as being already there, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living Lord, you restored us to life by rising Christ, raising Christ from the dead. Strengthen us by this Easter sacrament that we may grow in holiness and love, serving you and one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with us. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. And with those whom you hold in your hearts in love and prayer this day. Amen. Let us be in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.